Question 500. What is the most inexplicable thing you have ever seen? Most inexplicable thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's like basically, you're asking me for something that I've seen that I couldn't explain through yes. logic. Yes, and yes I that is what inexplicable means. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen something I couldn't explain. But I, I saw something when I was younger that I couldn't explain till I was older. Does that count? Sure. Okay. Um, when I was young, uh, driving in the car, I was in the back with my brother and my mum and dad were in the front. And um, dad suddenly shoved his foot on the brake to stop and uh, we saw this person walk across the road in front of us, get to the other side of the road and vanish. Absolutely, completely vanish. And we're like, holy crap. <laughs> and for a long time I was like, fuck, did we just see a ghost? Some shit like that. I mean, obviously later in life I can reconcile that with it was just that it was nighttime and the lighting was crap and this person obviously disappeared in the shadows and they were an idiot because I walked down in front of my dad and were nearly fucking dead. But mm. it was like ghosts at the time sort of thing. Mm. So at the time it was inexplicable, but later on in life I'm like, <laughs> yeah, what? Well, yeah. But you still don't have an explanation. No, I didn't at the time, no. No, you still don't. You can assume well, it. I can, I, yeah, well, yeah. logically, people don't just vanish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that, guys. I had to take the phone call. No problem. No problem. Okay, I mean, one of the most inexplicable things I've seen is, is Jeff disappearing. <laughs> On a previous a show, he just he, he <laughs> vanished like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, the, no, the weirdest thing is when Jeff turns into Jar Jar. <laughs> no. Hi, Jen. <laughs> you're, Jen, you're, you're trying. You're, 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 Jen, you're trying to lead me down a very um, dark path here. Uh, I didn't okay. ask you to do. I said it was weird. I think, I think it's implied that you are trying to lead me in that. Just give me a gentle nudge in that direction. I've got an answer, but you won't like it. Just me, let me read the chat. Nerdy says this YouTube channel is close to inexplicable. <laughs> Nikki says, I have, but it's classified. So what is the actual question here? Just so Give me a sec, let it. me finish this. Oh, uh, okay. What is the most inexplicable thing you've ever seen? Uh, the fact that there are flat earthers in 2020. <laughs> See, Il Ilya says, people who don't put grocery carts away. It's unexplainable as to why they don't put them in the cart holder. They leave them in empty parking lot spaces like arseholes. Yeah. I don't yeah, do that, that, but there is a circumstance I can see where people would. Um, when my children were very young, I did not want to leave them even alone in the car long enough to go put the cart away. But the way I solved the problem was I always parked right next to a cart return. Mm -hmm. That way I put the kids in the car, put the cart away, and never leave the children alone in the car. Um, so, I always put them away with one exception. Problem. There's... There's a shopping center um, in the next suburb over, and it's a really big shopping center. It, it's got a couple of thousand car parks and only three trolley return bays. So if you are stuck with parking in an area where there isn't one of those trolley return bays, you've got to walk more than half of, you can end up having to walk more than half the car park bay to find a trolley return bay. And they're always full because there's not enough return bays. So most people just don't bother. So they end up being left on the footpath or wherever else. And it's like, yeah, if you put the trolley return bays in, people might actually fucking use them. I am an ass about that because I will... My level of how considerate I am about other people is vastly proportional to how much I hurt. Mm. And walking I around a supermarket. See you there winding up your I'm gonna annoy everyone face. Yes. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, do I admit to how much of an arse I can be? And shopping trolleys is the perfect example. Because if I have to walk around a supermarket, very often by the time I get out of that supermarket, I'm more likely to kill myself than return a trolley. 
Um, I get that, David. It's the same, you know, when it gets, the pain gets really bad, just, everybody can just fuck right off. Like, yeah, I totally get that. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say generally I... I will try and return it. <laughs> Why don't they put the trolley return base next to the disability base? They're always the other side of the fucking car park. I've had this problem taking my mum shopping and I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. If she had to put, if she, when, when she used to be able to drive, she would not have been able to do this. And I'm like, mm. why? Not entirely. It is. But anyway, uh, Granny, inexplicable. You know, I really, the only thing I can even think of, and I can't remember well enough exactly what it looked like because this was in high school we were doing we were running some kind of experiment in physics class in high school and it involved water and it involved tubing and ours was running backwards and i couldn't figure out why the water was running the wrong direction <laughs> i think it probably had something to do with water pressure but i don't know capillary action maybe could be yeah uh Joan says, my sister going into a slip with the car and all other traffic just disappeared when the car ended up beside the road. I've had some weird things like that, which I would describe more as lucky. <laughs> Actually, you know, that reminds me of something. Yeah, there was there was something. And I used to explain this through angels, and now I can't. But it was 1984. Um, and it was the day they opened the Michael Jackson wax exhibit in Nashville. And we were moving um, from Fort Knox to Fort, uh, to Fort Hood. And we had to drive through Nashville to do it. And when we did, there were two lanes of traffic that were at a dead stop. And there were two lanes of traffic moving at 60 miles an hour. And um, we were in the right lane of the two that were moving and somebody pulled out from a dead stop directly in front of me. There was no way I could slow down in time. There was a red truck next to me and there was a concrete barrier next to the red truck. And so I was convinced that I was about to die. So I just closed my eyes and I said, hello Lord, here I come. <laughs> and when nothing happened, I opened my eyes and the car that had been in front of me was behind me. <laughs> and now my husband was driving the other car and he was directly behind me when all this happened. So he saw the whole thing. And, I, and so we, we pulled off and I said, what happened? And he said, the red truck got as close to the concrete barrier as it could. The car that pulled in front of you moved to the side of the lane and you went in between them. <laughs> With my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, at least you survived it. That's the important thing. Yeah. Mm. Manda. Was it, how's that old thing say? At least million to one coincidences happen all the time. Yes. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda. I can't really, I can't really think of anything at the, the moment. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> oh, you know what? Um, there was this time that uh, that Angel ended up. Um, it, when we moved into this apartment in. Um, uh, the, the town that we both grew up in, I guess. Um, he was kind of an escape artist, so uh, I had, had to put one of those chain locks on the door, and um, within a, a couple of hours, he had figured out, you know, he needed to climb onto something to pull it down. But he had taken this fucking table that um it was incredibly heavy with a lamp and books on it that i could barely move myself and i had been working in the kitchen making dinner and i turned around and the door is open and the, the table had been moved and he was five years old so i have no idea how he did this <laughs> but yeah so he was able to 
to pull the, the, the table with the lamp and the books and everything all the way across the room next to the door, climb up, take it off and book it out of the house um, in like less than 10 minutes time. And yeah, and I have no idea how he did that. So that was very inexplicable to me. Mm. Gotcha. Um, I have met people who actually I don't believe say, you. It's, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have I have met and talked to people who actually say that the Last Jedi is a good film. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to work out which way he was going to go. It had to be one of those, didn't it? There's always Do you have one. A... There's always one. <laughs> always one. It has to be Badger. Do you have anything in the real world? Uh, not that I can think of off the top of my head. No, I've been I've been racking my magnificent brain trying to come up with something, and I'm just stuck. See, I'm going to give a phenomenon, the bystander effect, but mostly because it annoys me. Interesting. Um, repeatedly, I have I have watched and stepped up and done something where there are tens of people around watching this disaster unfold and them doing absolutely nothing when when so little was required um and i i'm completely blown away that 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 that, 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 that we don't we 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 just watched gobsmacked We love the fucking carnage, I guess. But it doesn't seem to be. Psychology says that the more people that are watching, the less likely it is that anyone will do anything. Yeah. Because everyone thinks that somebody else is going to do something. Yeah. But even when no one is doing anything. Mm-hmm. Bystander effect. Yeah. It's not good. Right. Did next you question. answer, Dave? Oh, I yeah, did. You just Bystander effect was mine. <laughs> I'm so used to having to ask it, it just fucking came out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> having a day. It's fine. Yeah, I, I've I've been trying to think of a, an actual answer, and I've got nothing. Um, all all the things that I haven't been able to explain that I can think of have later to kind of just gone. Oh, that's what happened. Yes. Apart but the point from, like, is, you can assume answers based apart upon from sort of minor things like, uh, like where did my socks go or something like that. I can't believe <laughs> how good a grade I got in my history exam. That's Speaking completely. Which, I'm still I wonder if it was the underpants and I'm branching out. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out where those socks have gone. By the way, like I said, <laughs> underpants and I'm branching out. <laughs> One sock at a time from the dryer. If you enjoyed that, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. If you think you've got a better answer or just want to tell us how wrong we are, leave a comment down below. Subscribe down here for new questions every day and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on our live shows. If you click over here, you'll see our latest upload. Over here for what YouTube thinks you'll love the most. And finally, for a complete playlist of all our currently recorded least questions, click here. <laughs>